When solving, remember we have to isolate the trig function and then we want either all sines, cosines, or tangents, right? So we look at this and say there's a cosine, sine, and tangent with no squares. We can't really change this. So we must be able to, um, to manipulate this in some way to make it better. So what's your thought process? What would you start out with? So we have cosine x plus sine of x, and you said tangents sine of x over cosine of x. Good. Cosine of x plus sine squared x over cosine of x. And then that's all equal to 2. Still, what should we keep doing now? Okay, awesome. So you guys did it different than first hour, which is fine, because you were equally correct. So you're saying you changed this panel to 1 minus cosine squared, okay? So we have cosine of x plus 1 minus cosine squared of x. That's all over cosine of x equals 2. That's different than I would have done it. Not that yours is any less good, because it's not. It's great. And then what? Okay, so this is times by cosine of x, cosine of x. We need a common denominator. So then we have cosine squared x, right? Then we have plus 1 minus cosine squared x, and that's all over cosine of x equals 2. So then you have these cancel out. So then we have this right now. 1 over cosine of x equals 2. So isn't that true to say we're looking at when does secant of x equal 2? Well, I like to solve with cosine, so I'm going to reciprocate the other side, and I'm going to look for when does cosine of x equal one half. Won't that work? Won't that work? Secant's a reciprocal of cosine. Well, that's easier. You're going to get the same answer if you solve for secant. So now we find that when does cosine equal one half? So the first place happens at pi thirds, and at five pi thirds. I'm going to write it up here x is equal to pi thirds and comma five pi thirds and then plus or minus two pi and we can add that as many times as we want. Now has anybody wondered why the back of the book is now putting a minus sign? You did wonder that. Okay, good to know. So here's why. I did not specify something Mr. Roberts pointed out to me I need to be making sure we do. So it is technically plus or minus 2 pi n, but here's the problem. Where we're not saying what n is, n could be a half, and now that's not a true statement. Do you see what I'm saying? It has to be whole numbers, or else this is not a true statement. We're not only adding pi. Does that make sense, everybody? So we can't plug in fractions. We can only plug in whole numbers. We're adding 2 pi either once, twice, three times. Or can we plug in negative 1? Do you see how if we plug in negative 1, that would take care of the minuses for us? So what the book is doing is they're saying, let's not put a minus. Let's go like this. We're going to add 2 pi n, and we're going to specify what n can be. So we're going to write out, and n can be, they write it in a like shorter term. n is whole numbers that are positive or negative. That's one way of saying it. Does that make sense? So that's called an integer. It can, n can also be 0. So they, that's how they write it in the book. An integer is a whole number that's positive or negative. So they go like this, n belongs to the integers, and integers is like a fancy z, so that's how they write it. n belongs to the integers, which means whole numbers, positive or negative, or zero. Or zero. All right, moving on. I'm not super worried. Yeah, you should try that. Yes, Mr. Roberts wants me to be particular than I have been in past years with that. So we're going to try to remember that. I'll try to remind you of that before the test and everything, so we'll be good. Okay, let's solve this one. Write it down in your notes. This is what, do you remember me saying? We ran into something last year and I can't remember what it is. It's yeah. this. It's right here. So if we solve this one, remember this is how we're going to start out. We're going to just pretend like this is 2 sine squared of just x minus 1 equals 0. We're going to just solve this one first and then we'll worry about the 2 in the very end. So what would we do? We'd add 1, divide by 2. So we're dealing with when does sine squared of x equal 1 half. True? Square root both sides. So we have when does sine of x, when we solve and we take a square root, we cannot forget we need plus or minus. So we have sine of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 over the square root of 2. 
So then we're looking at when the sine of x equals plus or minus roots 2 over 2, we're rationalizing the denominator. We're going to solve this separately. So when does sine of x equal positive root 2 over 2? And when does sine of x equal negative root 2 over 2? So let's highlight where that happens. We know that's 45 degrees, right? Three, so pi fourths, 3 pi fourths, 5 pi fourths, and 7 pi fourths. So this happened in all of the quadrants. Now look, if we list this out, so x is equal to pi fourths, this happened, and x is equal to 3 pi fourths, true? If we list those out, we don't need to list out these other two solutions. Why? Yeah, because if we start here and we add pi, that's going to put me right here, taking care of that solution. Everybody see? And if we start here and add pi, that's going to put me here. So instead of double dipping on solutions, we're going to write this out, and then we're going to say plus pi as many times as we want. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know why the book doesn't. The book never only puts one. They'll put two. Because he's saying if we put one and then just added pi half, that would take care of them all. You're right. The book doesn't do that. So let's stick with two solutions or sometimes there's only one. Right? Okay. Okay, so does everybody understand that? Why we're only listing out the first two? Okay, cool. Now, now we have to go through and say, okay... However, it wasn't x, it was 2x, 2x. So now we can finish solving. So to finish solving, we'll times both sides by a half. So our final answer is x is equal to times a half in there and there. So we would say pi eighths and then plus pi halves n now. And x is equal to 3 pi eighths. And now it's plus pi halves n. And then we're going to do that little theme that knows because to find all the solutions, and we're going to say let n belong to the integers. Sweet stuff. What do you mean? What if you didn't do the what? The n belonging to the integers? Well, obviously, you wouldn't know you didn't learn it until today, so it's going to be fine. Yes. Great question. So we have four solutions here. Do you, does that part make sense? Yeah. So what's happening, if we start here and add 2 pi, that would just put me right back up here. So that's skipping over this solution. So what's happening is we're listing out that solution and that solution. And then instead of listing them out all four and adding 2 pi, if we just list out the first two and only add pi, that's going to land there. Add pi again will put me back there. Add pi will put me here. Add pi will put me back there. You see how that takes care of all of them? And then same here. Starting here, add pi will put me there. Add pi will put me back there. So we only have to do the first two and add pi. Now that only happens if you're in all four quadrants. So that's a good note. If you're in all four quadrants, we're only going to list the first two. Plus or minus only pi. Okay, awesome questions. Okay, here we go. Starting today's lesson. Today's lesson is actually not too bad. It's actually pretty easy. It's just a lot of algebra. So here are some sum and difference formulas. They're like trig identities. They make you be able to write something in a different format. Um, so these are equivalent in form. If you were to get one of these on the ACT, they will give you the formula. They will say, use this formula to rewrite sine or to evaluate sine of 75 degrees. So they give you the formula. It's just knowing how to use it. So what this allows us to do, you guys, is to take something of sine that's added and rewrite it as multiplication because if we have it in multiplication, we can then usually uh, calculate this with the unit circle and simplify it down. Where it wasn't right here, these two things being added wasn't on the unit circle, but when we split it apart, it'll be good. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So it's just memorizing these. These are already on your paper. You know the paper I gave you with all the formulas. So I'm not going to wait for you to write them down because they're already written down for you. But here's what you have to do. Memorize these. So here's some tricks that I see. This is what I, you have to do in college. When you're given a formula, you have to figure out a trick to help you memorize it. So notice something. For sine, so sine of u plus v, we can split it up. I want you to notice something about sine. So with sine, sine is always on the outskirts of town. Look, sine, sine on the outskirts. 
And on the inside is cosine, 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 cosine. Does everybody see? Sine's on the outside, cosine's on the inside. Then notice it literally just goes in this order, UV. See, look, UV, 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 UV. Everybody good? Then with sine, the sine stays the same. Plus is a plus. With sine, the sine stays the same. A minus is a minus. Okay. You're going to have the formulas written down today. These are just tricks I see. With cosine. So notice with cosine, I'm still getting these memorized myself. With cosine, notice it goes cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Does everybody see? That happens every time with cosine. Look at this next one. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine. And then look, it does go in order like it did up there, UV. See, look, UV, 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 UV. Now with cosine, the sine is opposite. If this is plus, this is negative. If this is negative, this is plus. Then with tangent, notice the sine is the same. It's addition on top, tangent of u plus v in that order, divided by 1. It's always going to be 1 minus tangent of u times v. So the sine on top is the same as the original, and then the sine below it will be opposite. So look, negative, negative, the sine below it will be opposite. These are stupid tricks that help me remember it. So now that I look at those and kind of think about that and memorize them, you got to have them memorized. I know it's tricks. That's how I memorize them. Okay, so I want to remind you one more time before we get started. What sum and difference formulas do is allow us to possibly rewrite a sine, cosine, or tangent function so that we can find exact answers using the unit circle, even though originally it is not a value on the unit circle. So that allows us to not give approximate answers, but exact answers. So our goal basically is to rewrite it in terms of our special angles from the unit circle. Now you can use any angle, any of them, and you can use them as addition or subtraction to equal something. I usually try to focus on 30, 60, 45, 90. So what's 75 degrees, for example? Wouldn't that be 30 degrees plus 45 degrees? You see what I'm saying, everybody? What's 15 degrees? Isn't that 45 minus 30? Do you see how then we could then maybe use that to find exact answers? Well, if not, here's an example. So here's the first example. It says find the exact value of cosine of 75 degrees. So up until today, we would say we can't. It's not on the unit circle. We can only give a decimal answer, which would have been true up till today. Now here's why that's no longer true. We can take and rewrite 75 degrees as addition. So we're going to rewrite this as the cosine of 45 degrees, which is on the unit circle, plus 30 degrees, which is on the unit circle. Okay, any questions up to there? Now the nice thing is, now we can go ahead and simplify this using this identity for cosine and rewrite it as multiplication, and then we'll be able to simplify. So let's rewrite this. So once again, thinking through the memorization. Remember, cosine goes cosine, cosine. This is u, this is v, everybody, do you see? Use in front, these in back. That always works that way. So we'll say cosine of 45 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees. Then with cosine, the sine is opposite. So then we'll have a minus. Then sine comes next, and it goes in the same order. Sine of u, so sine of 45 degrees, and then sine of 30 degrees. And now we've rewritten it so that we can calculate this based on our unit circle. So I'm going to highlight 30 degrees and 45. Remember, cosine is x, sine is y. So let's answer this. What is the cosine? We should have this memorized. What's the cosine of 45 degrees? Root 2 over 2. Okay, good. What's the cosine at 30 degrees? Root 3 over 2. So we've just calculated each of these. That's a time sign, still a time sign. Minus sine at 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. And then times by sine at 30 degrees is 1 half. Now look at that. There's our exact answer. We just want it in more simplified form. You can times two radicals together. That's root 6 over 4, right? Minus root 2 over 4. Yes. Okay, so now look. Common denominator. Can we put the numerator together to make it the prettiest possible? So we have root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. We can't combine with addition and subtraction radicals unless they're exactly alike. 
and they're not, so we would leave it like that. That's an exact answer, not a decimal answer. So there you go. Our answer is this. Now, I want you to compare. How can we check to make sure our answer is correct? What I want you to do is make sure your calculator is in degree mode and type in cosine of 75 degrees. This is going to give you an approximate answer, but then we can at least compare it to our exact answer. So if you type that in, just give me a couple decimal places. Point, okay, point 0.258. Now go right here and type this into your calculator off on the side. Root six minus root two, hit enter. Make sure you hit enter first, and then divide by four. Point two five eight. So you can check, is my exact answer the same as my approximate answer? Yes. So I know I got my exact answer right. No, it would need to be in degrees, so look, you're in putting a degree. Okay, awesome, yes. So what is your Yes, yeah. so there's going to be times when we can do this and times when we can't. If you can't rewrite it as angles from addition and subtraction from the inner circle, it's still just approximate is all we can find. Okay. Good question. Okay, next one, sine of pi 12. So what you would want to do is say what radian plus what radian or what radian minus what radian would equal pi 12. So you guys, that's freaking hard to think about, honestly. Let's convert it to a degree. Thinking in degrees is way easier. So you take pi 12 and times it by 180 over pi. So let's rewrite this in, in degree format. We're looking at sine of what degree? 15 degrees. It's easier for people to think in degrees. Okay, can't I write 15 degrees? Yes, good, as a subtraction. You said that 15 degrees is 45 degrees minus 30 degrees, which are all, both on our unit circle. We wouldn't do this if you wrote something that wasn't on the unit circle or defeats the purpose. So now you'd say, okay, sine goes sine on the outsides, cosine on the insides. Here's u, here's v. So you'd say sine of 45, then cosine's on the inside, cosine of 30. Do not put the sine in with it. The sine is in the formula. With sine, the sine stays the same. So then cosine's on the inside, cosine of 45, sine of 30. So that's here and here, so let's now calculate it. The sine of 45 is root two over two, the cosine at 30 is root three over two, minus the cosine of 45 is root two over two, the sine at 30 is one half. So now we have root six over four minus root two over four. We have a common denominator, so we can put this together. Root six minus root two all over four. And there's our exact answer. Didn't that answer just happen to come out the same as the last answer? Yay, it did. Not necessarily. How can I know if it's correct? You would type into your calculator, sign it 15 degrees, get the decimal, and compare it to your exact answer. Which it does come out right. Let's do another one. But first, all right, looking at this one, it says, find the exact value of this. So what you would notice is, on this one, you would say, well, that is a difference formula, and sine's on the outside, cosine's on the inside, true? So that's a sine. Now, sine, the sine stays the same. So you're saying we could put this back together using the formula, and you said that's sine of? 30. So how did they get that? They said that this is the same thing as 42 degrees minus 12 degrees. Because look at the formula. Do you see it? Isn't this U? Isn't this V? Can't we write it either like this or like this? Do you see? So then we have sine of 30 degrees, which is 1 half. So these were on our unit circle. So we went backwards to see if then it was on the unit circle. So this is the example that takes a ton of algebra. I need you, I'm gonna give you time to write it out in each step, okay? So everybody writing it out. The cosine of arc tangent of one plus arc cosine of x. So what you need, as you're writing this down, I want you to notice this is a cosine um, addition formula. Well, why? Because look, this is the format cosine of u plus v, 
we have a cosine of a u plus a v. They're just really ugly u's and v's. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to go off to the side right here, and I'm going to say, what? let's calculate u. So we can just write u instead of as arc tangent of 1. Let's write what that answer is, and let's simplify v if possible. This is going to come out a lot easier. It's just that it's not going to come out any different of an answer. It's just going to be easier when plugging it in. So u is arc tangent of 1, and v is arc cosine of x. We've got to see if we can calculate each of those. So let's focus on our tangent of 1. Now remember what this means. This is from the last unit. We have an angle whose tangent will simplify to be 1. True? Isn't that on the unit circle? Can't tangent simplify to be 1 on the unit circle? Now also remember with tangent inverse or arc tangent, our outputs have to be, our answers have to be in pi halves interval or negative pi halves interval, and only that. So where on this interval does arc tangent, the angle where the tangent simplifies to be 1? Yeah, let's do, let's do radians, but you're not wrong, 45 degrees or pi force. So u is literally pi force. Well, that's a lot prettier than arc tangent of 1. Now, we, right here, it says we have an angle whose cosine is x. We can't do that on the unit circle. Well, cosine is still a right triangle function then. Sine, cosine, tangent are originally right triangle traits, true? So this is a right triangle. So what does this mean? This means we have a right triangle with an angle where the cosine is x. Isn't x, x over 1? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So my adjacent side is x, my hypotenuse is 1, true? So this really just means we have a right triangle with this information on it. Now, can't I quickly find this side? Because we might need it. So let's do some algebra to figure out this side. Pythagorean theorem. 1 squared minus x squared equals the other side squared. Solve for this. So a lot of you still did not get this right on the last test. So isn't this 1 minus x squared equals question mark squared? So then when we square root, so then we have the square root of 1 minus x squared. Guess what some people did on the last test? You won't even believe it when I tell you. They square rooted that and they square rooted that. Yeah, I was mortified. So we have the square root, but that's okay because now you're going to not do that. The square root of 1 minus x squared is this side. Does everybody agree? This is just a statement. That's Okay. So now instead of, so we're going to use u as pi force, and we're going to use v as that triangle. Okay, let's plug in with the formula now. Okay, so we have a cosine. Now remember, cosine goes like this, changing colors, because I want to be able to write into the blue. Okay, so remember, cosine works like this, right? Cosine of u, so cosine of pi force, and then it goes cosine again, times by cosine of that, V, correct? Cosine of that triangle. So cosine of that triangle. Then we have erasing to give myself some room. I'm going to erase these because now we've written down what U and V are. We're good. We'll be able to see because I want to keep it in order. So now we have cosine sine is opposite. So it's going to be minus. So minus sine of u, was it u pi force? So sine of pi force, and then it's sine again, sine of that triangle. This is how we would set it up. And now all we have to do is simplify it in sections. Okay, let's simplify this. What is the cosine at pi force? We should have it memorized. Roots 2 over 2. We have now simplified that. Then times by, what's the cosine of that triangle? Isn't cosine, oh heck, another hour? So x over 1, just to show my work. We just simplified that. Minus sine at pi force is? Right? Roots 2 over 2. 
We've just simplified that. And then we're timesing by sine of that triangle. Isn't sine, oh heck, square root of one minus x squared over one. Well, we're almost done. So now we have root two x over two minus, I'm gonna leave these split apart. We could take two and multiply it in. No, we wouldn't. And then minus root two, I'm gonna leave it spread apart, one minus x squared over two. Common denominator means we can put the numerator together. So we have this, root two x minus root two, root one minus x squared, and that's all over two. Now, anytime they give you an answer and they have something in common, they factor it out, if you've noticed. So what on top could we factor out? Yes, so they would write it as pulling out a root two, divide by root two, divide by root two, so then left would be x, minus the square root of one minus x squared, and that's all over two. And there's your answer. It's just an expression. We don't know what x is. If one of them started as an expression, it's gonna be an expression. This one. Okay, it says prove that cosine of pi half minus x is equal to sine of x. So you should notice, if it's a fraction and cosine, this is a different formula. So this is like proving that this side is equal to this side. So we're only going to touch this side. We'll stop when we get there. So you'd say this is a subtraction. So with cosine, we would do cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So cosine of pi has cosine of x. The sine is opposite plus sine of pi has sine of x. Now we can simplify it. The cosine at pi half, well, okay, pi half. Cosine is x, sine is y. So don't we have zero times by cosine of x? Plus the sine of pi half is one. So plus one times sine of x. So we're showing our work. You said this becomes, so we have zero plus one times sine of x is sine of x. Zero plus sine of x is sine of x, and we have reached our goal, and done. Okay, I want you to try the next one completely by yourself. Go for it. So tangent, you'll use your tangent formulas, or you could do sine over cosine. I personally would just do the tangent formula. So, ready, go. Is this what your formula looks like? Okay. Now, remember, I heard a lot of you saying it correctly, which is awesome. You said, I heard you talking to your neighbors, 3 pi, This the tangent at 3 pi would be the same as the coterminal angle of that. So, right here is 2 pi, so isn't 3 pi right there? So, tangent is... 
y over x. So what is the tangent at 3 pi? Zero. zero. So you're saying that became zero? And what, this became zero? So we had tangent of theta plus zero, which is tangent of theta. Then on bottom, we had one minus zero. This is addition. This one's zero times tangent, which is zero. So we have one minus zero. So we have tangent of theta over one, which is tangent of theta. This simplified to be tangent of theta. Who got it right? Nice. Good job, guys. Tangent of three pi zero. So then we have tangent of theta plus zero, which is tangent of theta. Then on bottom, we have one minus tangent of theta times zero. So that'd be one minus zero. Okay, last example of the day. Write it down. This one's actually a lot easier than it looks. It says, find all of the solutions on this interval from 0 to 2 pi, not including 2 pi, but including 0, if need be. So notice it says tangent of x plus pi force plus sine of x minus pi force is equal to negative 1. We would not know how to solve this one because we don't have sign of the same thing or, you know, like this is pretty ugly. We would not know what to do. But because we do have those sum formulas or addition formulas, we can rewrite this as multiplication. So I'm going to get let you get it written down. Okay, so everybody, I'm going to focus here and say, oh, that's an addition formula. So I can rewrite that as something else. So I'm going to do it in red, just that first piece. Can we do split this up with sine? Doesn't it have sine on the inside, um, on the outsides, and cosines on the inside? So sine of x, cosine of pi force. This is an addition formula. No, we'll just do split it up. You're confusing it with arc signs and stuff. So then we have with a plus sign, we have a plus, no, with sine it's the same sign, so yes. So plus, and then cosine of x, and then sine of pi force. That was just that piece, everybody. Now, look, we have plus, so I'm going to put a plus sign right here, plus, changing colors again, we can now split apart that piece. Let's do that right here below. So we would have sine of x, cosine of pi force. And then when it's minus, with sine it's minus. So minus cosine of x, sine of pi force. And then all of that is equal to negative one. So now that we have a lot of stuff here, because this is an addition sign, if it was a subtraction, we would need to distribute the negative, right? But it's addition. So look, we have sine of x cosine of pi force plus sine of x cosine of pi force. We have two of those. So we have two sines of x's, cosines of pi force. Does everybody see? And then we have this plus negative that. So that just goes away. So you're saying we have this equals negative one. Now you would say, well, I know what cosine of pi force is. Root two over two, thank you. So we're really looking at this. Two sines of x times by root Root 2 over 2, that's just root 2, over 2, and that's equal to negative 1. What's 2 divided by 2? Flip 2 divided by 2. So we're just looking at sine of x times by root 2 equals negative 1. Isolate the trig function. Divide root 2 over 
So now we have, when does sine of x equal, yeah, negative root 2 over 2. He rationalized the denominator, everybody. That's on our unit circle. And it happens in two places. Cosine x sine is why we need it to be negative. Cosine x. Isn't this fine? We need to be looking at the y value. Oh, you're fine. Making sure I'm not crazy. Is that, is that, are we good, everybody? So what did we say it was? So x is equal to 5 pi fourths. And x is equal to 7 pi fourths. And it's set on an interval from 0 to 2 pi, so that's all. pretty easy stuff. It's just like knowing how to use it and plugging it in. So what I want you to do is the homework now. Here is the problem. Seven dash four. 